signs and wonders, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. The word says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run unto it and is saved. Here we are before you in your presence this day. Your word says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Father, as your children they have, they have gathered before you here today, O God, Lord, let there be a miracle for someone today in the name of Jesus. We've read in your word in the open heaven this morning that you are the God of miracles. Father, that miracle that somebody has been waiting for, you will do it today in the life of someone in the name of Jesus. That same thing that will remain for the joy of someone to be full. Father, Lord, do it in the lives of your children today in the name of Jesus. At the end of everything, let only your name be glorified. Thank you, wonderful God. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Once again, you are specially welcome to church. I pray that the joy of the Lord shall continually be your strength in Jesus' name. The Bible says, let us not be weary in well doing, for we shall reap if we faint not. As you continually worship God, as you continue to be in His presence, the Almighty God will continue to increase you on every side, and the name of the Lord be glorified by your life in Jesus' name. So this morning, by the grace of God, we'll be going through the Word of God together briefly, and I believe the Lord, will, the Holy Spirit will breathe upon the Word, and it will do us good in Jesus' name. So this morning, by the grace of God, I'll be ministering on this topic that says, crossing to the other side. Crossing to the other side. And once, once more time, we want to bless God for the success of the Holy Ghost Congress in Nigeria. I hope you watch it. If you have not watched it, you can still go and watch some of those sermons on the YouTube. It will do you good and uh, you'll be tremendously blessed. And also want to bless the name of the Lord for safety for our people. For the first time in the past seven months, they gathered together in millions. And uh, the name of the Lord be glorified in Jesus' name. So this morning, we are checking together this word of God, this topic that says, crossing to the other side. For emphasis sake, I will still read this book of Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to 41. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. It says, and the same day, when the evil was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they awake, they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly. And said one to or another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey? Crossing to the other side. Brethren, with this particular scripture, Jesus, after attending to the multitudes of people who came to him, he told his disciples that it is high time to cross over the sea to the other side. So we have dwelt so much in this place, it is time to cross over to the other side. 
as we are, as the year is running to an end, gracefully you will cross over to 2021 in the mighty name of Jesus. Because brethren, hey, uh, the Bible says, redeem me the time, because the days are even. Year is going, and it will only take the grace of God for us, even to enter that major year. But as God of heaven it, you will enter into year 2021 in Jesus' name. And God will grant you long life and prosperity in Jesus' name. So Jesus spoke to his disciples, said, it is time we have to cross the sea to the other side. They started the journey, but there was a great storm, and the wind was boisterous, a great wind. When we were dealing with the wind of change, we just told us that the wind of change can be in two ways. It can blow positively and it can blow negatively. But over towards your direction, it will be positively in the mighty name of Jesus. The wind blew here also, but in a negative way towards disciples and even towards Jesus. Because Jesus was also in the boat. And before I get too long in this message, I want to quickly show something to you here. That when Jesus was telling the disciples that let us cross over to the other side, Jesus was telling them that there was a divine mission for them at the other side. Somebody who is miracle cannot afford to wait longer is waiting at the other side. Somebody who needs deliverance is waiting at the other side. Someone who needs breakthrough is waiting for us at the other side. Someone who needs healing is waiting for us at the other side. So we cannot afford to stay here. We have to cross over to the other side. And for you to get what I'm saying, they were on a divine mission going to the other side. If you get to Chapter 5 of that same book of Mark. At the other side, let's see who is waiting for them at the other side. Mark chapter 5 from verse 1. Before we continue, now, they said, and they came over to the other side. You know, but before they got to the other side, many things happened. Let's see the, the tricks of the devil so that they will not get to the other side. Because someone was waiting for his deliverance, for his breakthrough. And let's see the book of Mark chapter 5. And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the gatherings. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one could bind him. No, not with chains. Because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and chains had been blocked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when they have crossed to the other side, see the miracle. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man. Thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, He said, Say, My name is Legion, for we are many. I'm not the only one here. We are so many here. We are enjoying ourselves in this man. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. They don't want to go out of America, they enjoy the place. And now there was now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. 
And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine. And the air ran violent down, and they stepped down to the sea. They were about 2,000, and they were choked in the sea. Before I continue, I don't know, even demons, devils, they even have a prayer request. They had their own prayer request, and God, it doesn't matter what is your, at least the most important thing is that this man that has been possessed with unclean spirits, or you are this unclean spirit, you have to leave this man. This is one of the major assignments whereby we have to cross to the other side. When the demons saw all those, they begged Jesus. They said, they have their own prayer request. Just make sure that we are not out of the country. Please, just send us into the swine. They may have their own prayer request. If demons will have prayer requests and God will answer, how much more you, son of the living God? Whatever be your prayer request today, the Lord will answer you according to his will in Jesus' name. But before we get into that area, they started the journey and there was a great storm to the extent that the sheep, their sheep was about to be turned over. The devil saw ahead. There is a glory ahead for someone. Ah, no. I, the devil wants to prevent every means for them to get to the other side. Because the devil knows if they get to the other side, this man with unclean spirit will be delivered. The devil knew they were on a divine mission. He had a captive who he had kept in bondage on the other side. Hence, he fought against the Lord and his disciples who were on a divine mission to deliver the oppressed. On the other side was the madman of Gadarenes who was waiting for his day of deliverance. I make a prophetic declaration to someone here today. Even if you have been banned by one form of demon or the other, as you come over to the other side today, there will be deliverance for you in the name of Jesus. There will be healing for you in the name of Jesus. There will be breakthrough for you in the name of Jesus. The question we first have to ask ourselves is that what of if those demons have succeeded in preventing them from crossing to the other side, the man will have been there for life, being tormented by unclean spirits. So for some of us, that one, for one reason or the other, you always see a blockage on your way, obstruction on your way. The, the, the thing is that the enemy has seen the glory ahead. But the enemy will fail over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I said the enemy will fail over your life in the name of Jesus. Are you sick? God is saying, it's time to come to the other side. We are there is healing. Are you in sorrow, pain, or poverty? There is joy, comfort, and abundance at the other side. You are destined to fulfill God's purpose on earth. And you will fulfill God's purpose on earth in the mighty name of Jesus. The devil tries to prevent them from crossing to the other side. But Jesus was in the boat. Jesus was there. And in fact, he's the one who declared the crossing over. But left for the enemy, he did not want them to cross over. He said, just leave me at the other side so that I continue the operation. But God said, no, Jesus said, no, it's high time to cross to the other side so that the people at the other side may receive their healing, their deliverance, their breakthroughs. And as God we have it, at the end of the day, they cross over to the other side. Everything that has been preventing you from crossing over to your breakthrough, to your greatness, to your healing, to your deliverance, the Lord will deal with those forces today in the mighty name of Jesus. Because when the enemy prevented them, 
the disciples, they woke up Jesus. The Bible said Jesus, all he just have to do is, he said, he, he, he rebuked the wind. Uh, verse 38 of uh, chapter 4, the Bible said, and he was in the inner part of the sheep, asleep on the pillow, and they awoke him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not if we perish? And he arose, and rebuke the wind on your behalf. Every negative wind blowing towards your direction. The Lord will rebuke those winds for you in the name of Jesus. And say, peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Because Jesus declared it. Over your life, Jesus is saying, peace, be still. Every turbulence before you, peace be still. Everything that is making your, your, that you don't even know the next step to take again. God is saying, peace be still. So shall it be for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So at the end of the day, even the devil tries to prevent them. But they are unstoppable. Jesus proved the devil wrong because he's the Lord of hosts. He's the one who rides upon the wings of the wind. He's the almighty. He has solutions to all things. Says, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything to add for me to do? So, brethren, the question is coming to you today that come over to the other side. Where there is peace, where there is joy, where there is greatness, where there is spiritual heights. Now, when you, when you are hearing this call, come over to the other side. As I'll be running this message up today, I have five points to develop. What will be your response to this call? Because some of these things, when they are saying it, physically it may not look like that. It may not look like it. So there are certain things you have to put in consideration if you are to get to your destination in life. And that is what I will quickly enumerate and share a few points with you as we close this message. Jesus says, let us cross over to the other side. If God is saying the same thing to you today, despite all the difficulties that we have to face, despite all the obstructions on your way, despite everything that makes it physically looking impossible, what will be your response if actually you are going to cross over to the other side? The first thing that must be your response is that you have to take both step of faith. Take both step of faith. If they are to divide faith for us, the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 talks about faith. Say faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This translation says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We are not moved by what we see. We are not moved by what we hear. We are not moved by physical. The physical situations are there, yes. But we are moved by the spirit of the Lord. We are moved by the word of God. We are moved by the power of God. We are not seeing the impossibilities. We begin to see the possibilities. We refuse to look at the obstacles. We begin to see the God of possibilities. You must take both steps of faith. If you can also help me check the book of uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. It says, casting all your cares upon me, for a care for you. What am I saying with this point, brethren, as we are going into another year? If God is saying, come over to the other side in any di direction that may apply to you, that looks impossible. If you actually you are going to get to your destination, 
you must be ready to take a bold step of faith. When Jesus was to feed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fishes. When he broke it and they began to, until when they begin to distribute it, distribute it, distribute it, there was multiplication, geometric progression. The thing continued to expand by itself. So in the year we are going, if you are to attain greatness, spiritually and in every area, that's why all of the opposition obstruction on your way, you must be ready to take a bold step of faith. Don't assume that things will happen as you sit down on one spot. Even when you are praying, God is listening to you. But even while you are still praying, God is listening. But nothing may still happen until when you take the baby step. You must be ready to take the baby step. If you are not ready to take that baby steps, while you are taking the baby steps, it's possible that you may miss your step and you may want to fall, but you will rise up again. Say, so even if the righteous fall seven times, they will rise up again. Don't be fearful of missing the point. Take the bold step of it. Get started. Do something. You are trusting God that you want to go back to school in year 2021. It's true you have applied to schools. But all what you are concerned is that how will I get money to go to school? Go there for say I've come. They say how much do you have? I don't even have any. They said I've been given admission. Today is the day of resumption. I have come to school today. And begin to see how God will just begin to maneuver something for you. But if you sit down on one spot and you begin to cry, I have not gotten financial here, and I don't have somebody to sponsor me. I don't, and you sit on one spot, you may not, it may be by taking that both step of it, maybe just entering the office. They begin to ask you questions. Well, we think you can also qualify for this. And you think it, before you know what is happening, the, the rest will be history. The next thing you'll be seeing is the day of graduation. And by the time you are graduating, if they ask you, how did you even skate through? You will say, I, I don't even know. I just know that I try it and it works out. When it is working for you, know that it's God working in your favor. And that God will work in your favor in Jesus' name. Go and look at most of the miracles that God did in the scriptures or Jesus performed. It was until when people steps out, a bold step of faith. I'm not saying that you are not going to consider factors surrounding what you are doing. In fact, there must be preparation to it. But brethren, you have to step out of your comfort zone. Step out by faith. Situation is not going to, nothing comes easily, anyhow. Nothing is going to present itself to you and say, if this is easy, just go into it, you will get it done. Just take a step of faith. And the Lord will answer for you. I'm praying the Lord will answer for you in the name of Jesus. See, when it gets to this point, even when you are going to take a step of faith, People that know the best about that particular area may be confused about what you are about to do. But the thing is that know that it's God that is leading you. Physical situation is not going to tell you that it is possible. I told us during the time we are about to start putting this uh, screen together, even the company that was to do it, they eventually called me, they said, Pastor, COVID-19 has just started. The whole nation has grounded down. You think we we'll still want to continue? You think you will be able? I say, no going back. Physically, it doesn't look like it because obviously that time, church was not even in operation again. We are only doing uh, maybe online with few that we can do. But they say, do you think we can continue? I say, yes. 
We have laid the foundation. The Bible said, the hand of Zerubbabel has laid the foundation of this house. It said, it shall surely complete it. It will complete it not by his mind, but because God will be with him, it will surely complete it. I said, let's continue. You say, are you sure? Yes. The rest is written today. With a physical mindset, all I supposed to do that day was, ah, well, let's hold on maybe till 2021. After COVID-19 has gone, maybe we will be able to try it. Oh, boy, by that time, maybe something else that will have cropped up. Or they may even say, we don't think we even have all the resources to do it again. So please, brethren, take a bold step of it. When you are to take this bold step of faith, I don't know why I'm hammering much in this area. I almost have five points, but I'm hammering much. On... When you are to take this bold step of faith, you are the one that is seeing the invisible. Your wife may not see it with you. So not to talk of your friends. You are the one seeing the invisible that you have to continue. Your husband may not see it with you. So if you are to wait for people to console you, to comfort you, to do, 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 you are wasting the time. And it's not their fault. Because physically looking, it doesn't look like it. But when it comes to God, if God's hand is on it, he makes all things beautiful in his own time. So you have to be very careful. If truly you have heard from God, if God is saying, press forward, you are unstoppable. You are to move forward by the grace and the power of the Almighty God. You are not going by your strength. And your strength will be renewed by God as you do so. Number two, because of our time. What will be your response to this point, to this call? Have awareness of his presence. Just know <laughs> Jesus is with you. You are not alone in the wilderness, in the storm. It's true, you are in the storm, but you are not alone. Have the awareness of his presence. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 says, I will never leave you or forsake you. See, the day when this thing happened to the disciples, Jesus was in the boat. So when the problem came, they beckoned unto it. They, they have the, the disciples, they have their awareness. Why are we troubling ourselves? Will Jesus also perish with us in this place? Let, even if he's sleeping, let's go and wake him up. Have awareness of his presence. That God's he said, I will always be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Call upon God. Have awareness of his presence that in this battle, in this journey, God is with me. That gives you confidence. That gives you boldness. He said, I have confidence in you, Jesus. I have confidence in you. Anytime, anywhere, I have confidence in you. Jehovah God. That must be your song. If you put your confidence in man, you are gone. Your confidence must be in the Lord. Have an awareness that is here with you. Is there with you. You may not be able to see him physically, but it's there working on your behalf. The disciples had the awareness that Jesus was in the boat. So if they know that he was in the boat, all they just need to do is to beckon on him. If they beckon on him, he will woke up, he all is just, uh, it's just like a simple thing, just say, you, uh, you wind, I rebuke you. You dangerous wind, dangerous storm. Peace, be still. Just three words. Peace, be still. And the Bible said, and there was a great scar. The Lord will speak peace be still to your situation today in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter the kind of trouble you have found yourself. The peace of God will come for you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Number three thing, what will be your response to this call? Even when God is asking you to come over to the other side, see the impossible situation before you. Call unto him in prayer. Pray. Daddy Joe gave us all kinds of prayers. Diverse ways of pray, prayer. Call unto him in prayer. And uh, the book of Psalm 50 verse 15. Psalm 50 verse 15. Say, and call upon me in the day of what? Trouble. Say, I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. If we say the day of trouble will not come, we are only deceiving ourselves. It's a, it's a matter of time. But he says, even when the day of trouble comes, he said, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and that shall glorify me. And when he gets to that time, it's not the kind of prayer you pray, and you, have, you put your hand in your pocket and say, God, you see now, you now, you see. Uh, you know I went to church last Sunday, so... Uh, why will you not that do that one? No. We, we are talking of, of a kind of a prayer that, in fact, the kind of, even Jesus, the Bible said, when he got into the garden of Gethsemane, he was praying, and the sweat that was coming from him was blood, like that of blood. When we get to that point, you will not be mindful of someone that is sitting beside you, or they will say you are shouting too much, or they will say your whole is too much. Why is he praying that you are the one who knows why you are calling on God? Call unto him in the place of prayer. And in this area, you have to be very careful a little bit that some people, after they have prayed some period of time, they stop praying. The Bible says, pray unto your joy before. We've had that question many times upon times that is uh, maybe people will say, you do not have faith if you are still praying. Ah, until your joy be full, continue praying. Don't stop praying. Because it's possible that you have prayed, God has answered, but there are princes in the atmosphere. Princes of Persia. <laughs> they say, ah, no, this is a major miracle. No, this one cannot come down. They seize it. They heard it. So when you continue in the place of prayer, God say, ah, why is uh, this? So, so, so. See, we've said to that one over, ah, okay. Somebody on the face of the earth stepped on a breakthrough. Ah, ah. You will remove your leg. God will send. If God has to send angels, he will send angels. If God has to come by himself, he will come by himself. Whichever way God will have to do, God will, he will rescue. He will, he will come. He will intervene. For the case of Daniel, God sent angel, another angel. Go and he sent divine reinforcement. He, he, the angel that is carrying the blessing, the prince of Persia already held him. He said, no, you are not going. You are not. And so God said, okay, this angel needs another, he needs help. Go and deliver. Send divine, divine reinforcement. He eventually, the miracle was delivered. And why am I saying this? Even if you have prayed and it seems as if you have not gotten the answer, don't stop. Don't, some people will resign to faith. They will say, I can't kill myself. Whatever will be, will be. They will stop praying. Don't stop. Oh, and don't over-spiritualize it. If God has spoken, I say, once have God spoken, twice have I heard that power belongeth unto God. Don't over spiritualize, except it is not God that is sending you on that mission. Get this right. It's not every battle that is your battle, it's not every fight that is your fight. If God has not sent you on that mission, don't trouble your brain with it. But if it is God, don't over spiritualize it and don't say maybe it is not the will of God. I've told us times upon times, I found myself in situations like this that I'm supposed to resign to faith. I refuse to resign to faith. When I was preparing for my board exams and things are getting difficult because I read in our third world country and it's difficult to, to, to diagnose the situation here the way everything is like opposite down. 
It got to a time that when I'm going for my review, I don't even tell people again. Even my closest friends, I don't tell them again. Because if I tell them, they will say, because some of them already told me, they said, ah, Pastor Peter, you see, God has asked you to be reading Bible and be praying for people. That is your calling. I say, yes, it's true. But this one, God has not, have not had that voice that don't do this thing again. I said, now, if I've not had that one, I will do all my best. I'm not going to resign to faith. I will continue till my joy be full. And the reason why the devil will try to uh, confuse you so that you, he will give you every reason why you have to resign to faith. It was so bad that the particular board we are writing for the state, at the point that they wrote me, they said, don't come for this exam again. They said, don't come again. The day I received that letter, they said, you have to go back to school after almost four years in school, you can now come and register for this. I said, you say I should not come back again. Which friend? Who will I be telling that story? So I said, okay, you hold on with your board. I call another board in California. I said, what is your name? My name is Peter Oyedina. This is the issue. I said, ah, okay, you have your document with you. I said, yes. I said, okay, let's check it. Said, oh, you are good. Oh, you can be doing it. Uh -huh. They rejected me somewhere. I called another place. And in America, just get it in any of the states. You can endorse it anywhere. So I started it again. And uh, at the end of the day, that dream was fulfilled. It was enough to call it quits. But I refused to call it quits. As I'm talking today, where I was rejected, if I tell them that I'm coming to practice in your states, with all joy, they will receive me. They say, because the status has changed. Praise the Lord. It's not the former one they used to see that they will see. By the time I give them uh, my license number, they won't even remember that I've come before them before. Please don't resign to faith. That is only if God has, if God answers on it, that this is what you have to do. That you have failed doesn't mean that you will fail forever, that you will continue to fail all the days of your life. No. Somebody was divine failure one day. They say failing for, I don't know how they define it. They, some of our students, they, they have forgotten how they define it for me. But the thing is that even if you fail, fail forward. You have tried over one thing or the other, and everything you are meeting is a rejection. Failure. Don't stop. Don't stop. A day is coming when the glory of God will be revealed upon your life. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Because some of us, we have missed our blessing in this area. We just resign to faith. We say, maybe it is not the will of God. Number four, because of my time. What will be your response to this call? You need to address the storm. There are certain storms that you yourself, you are the one, you have to address it. Because the word of God says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How do you address it? Address the situation in the name of Jesus. Write down the book of 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and you have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than what? Than he that is in the world. Say, ye are of God, little children, you have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Remember the name of Jesus. The book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 says, God has highly exalted him and has given him the name that is above every other name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every name shall bow. If anything you are going through, if it is demonically inspired, just use the name of Jesus. They, when they hear that name, they will tremble. They, they say, demons tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. 
Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything written about you is great. Demons will tremble at his presence. In fact, this will blow your mind. Brethren, even if we are to deal with the power of darkness, demons, it's easier. So easy. All we have to do is call the name of Jesus. They will tremble. They cannot stand it. They can't. The name of Jesus is enough. You know the worst one that is most dangerous? Uh, the one that is seriously dangerous is, uh, how will I describe this? So, I will say it in Yoruba and I will try in English. The one that is most dangerous to deal with is the one they call Ugu and We Yamima. The, the war of the saints. If, the war of what? Of the brethren. If it is for demons, all we just, just call the name of Jesus. They will tremble. They cannot stand it. But when believers are the ones waging, waging war against themselves, you will see believers still carry the same Bible and begin to call the name of someone. Say, no, 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 die. This one if God is to kill everyone, you also will not be alive. And they are using the name of Jesus. They are using Bible. They are using... That's the most dangerous one. At times, God will be looking from heaven and say, how will I deal with these people, my children? And that's where unity comes in. We, are, we have to disagree to agree over many situations. But we've seen situations whereby people go on the mountains and they are playing against one another. So, how is God going to deal with that? But God will deliver, them, will deliver us from them in the mighty name of Jesus. You need to address the storm. Whatever is not working, address it. Speak. They have ears. They have ears. They have ears. Speak to those things. Even if it is your book that is giving you a dick, they lay your hand on that book. You will do your book. Listen, the God said I have to read you and pass this thing. Here, here, here. They're here. If it is one of your equipment, your instrument at work that is not functioning, lay your hand on it. Speak, address. Do as if you are talking to people may say you have lost your mind. No, you have not lost your mind. They hear. They have ears. They hear. Address the storm. That is why Jesus was telling those disciples. He said, you are of little faith. You don't even have faith at all. Why are you uh, fearful? How is it that you have, in fact, it's no faith. No faith is true. In fact, if it is little faith, it's okay. At least you have little. But for these people, they, Jesus described them. That's uh, Mark chapter 4 verse uh, 40. He said, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? This one, no. Zero faith. Zero times one million. Zero. But the Bible, if he say, oh ye men of little faith, at least that little, if they times it by one million, maybe you will get something. But it's so dangerous when you have complete, when the enemy has taken completely away from you that faith. No faith. And that is what the enemy is targeting. So that it can take away that faith of God in you. But it will not succeed in Jesus' name. Address the storm. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The last point, brethren, come over to the other side. What will be your response to this call? Because getting to the other side doesn't come easily like that. The last point is that you have to persevere. I refuse to be discouraged. Discouragement will come. And this area is very key. You have to understand this. Discouragement will come. And the worst part of this area is that it may even come from unexpected quarters. But refuse to be discouraged. At times, when those discouragement are coming, the people that the discouragement is coming from, they may not mean to discourage you, but they just want to tell you the reality of the situation, which is with facts. Discouragement will come even from unexpected quarters, but refuse to be discouraged. 
hold on to God. That is, you told us the story of a particular woman. They said this woman was trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And the pastor has prayed, prayed, and prayed. Nothing happened. So one day, they said by inspiration, the pastor now called the woman, go to office, come. Why is your case still like this? We've prayed. I know how God used us for things like this. And the woman confessed to the pastor that, ah, well, let me tell you the truth today. I have no womb. That in those days, something happened. They did some evacuations and they messed up with the uterus. And the doctor asked to remove the uterus. So since then, so the pastor here, so they, they, they've removed the uterus. So, and you ask us to be praying. Ah, okay. They said since then, if the woman is coming this direction to the pastor, the pastor will take another direction. Because he doesn't want to bother his brain over that one again. But if they have removed your uterus, why are you asking me to pray? So it's when the uterus is there that uh, something will grow. So they said this sister discovers that whenever it's coming either to the pastor for prayer, the pastor will take another side. Ah, you know what she did? She put the man of God in his place. She said, "No, okay, I will not trouble the pastor again." I will, tr I will continue to trust in him. So there can be discouragement from unexpected quarters. The best of man is man. The pastor may step on your toes. That doesn't mean that you have to leave your faith. So he said, well, if I can't get solutions to my problem through the past, because it's obviously seen now that even the man of God is dodging me. And we can't blame the man of God. He has tried his best, and with all facts and figures, she discovered, I have to write, I can't put another uterus there. So, so she said, now, I'm not going to trouble the man of God again. I'm going to focus on the God of the man, the God of heaven. Do you know that that same month, the miracle happened? Even though the amazement of the pastor to the amazement of the doctor. The next time that she went for this test and they said she's pregnant, they have to go to the doctor. The doctor said, no, you are not, it's not you. It's a wrong uh, diagnosis. It's a wrong laboratory report. It's a wrong ultrasound. Do it again. She's pregnant. We are the one who removed your uterus. So according to our medical books, We've never had that the uterus will grow back again after we have removed it hysterectomy. He said, but the thing is still there. So what do you want us to do? Okay, let's continue to wait and see. And the pregnancy continued to approach month by month, month by month. At the ninth month, the woman delivered a bouncing baby boy. So who we explain that one? Science may not be able to explain it. The pastor may not be able to explain it. God is the source. Who knows how this came to be? So I want to appeal to someone here. Come over to the other side. In your plight of getting to the other side, you have to persevere. And please, don't be discouraged. Discouragement will come. But please, don't be discouraged. Cling to the whole rugged cross. Trust in the Lord. Put all your trust in him. And at the end of the day, the day of the glory will come. Testimony will come. Unexplainable testimony. The testimony you cannot explain how, how it happens. As we are going to the end of this year, it will happen in your life in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The miracle that when they ask you to come and explain, you can't put it together. You just say, brother, if I'm not going to deceive you, all I just discovered is that God did it. That's it. That will be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. And when it comes to this area, God usually specializes in impossibilities. 
To God be the glory, time will not permit us to be sharing this testimony. I have a course that I was doing of recent. is the most dreaded course so far. In fact, I said, maybe this is where the whole program will end. As God, we have it at the end of the day. That was the same course they said, I got excellence award. Praise the Lord. That was the most dreaded course that uh, you have to be dissecting animal, be checking, testing. I see at this stage of age of mine, what time do I have for all this? I said, maybe this is where all, everything we end. If they are to depend on me doing all this one, the, the first time I pick that course, I have to drop it. I order those, those things. They came. I, put, I just told the children, this is not for food, though. This uh, <laughs> is animals to be dissected. We put it in the fridge for almost three months. At, at the end of three months, I said, throw it away. Uh, when I pick that course again, we will order another one. I order another one. I even put it inside the fridge in the church. I said, let me still be looking at this thing. You see there. It's the most dreaded thing I can ever talk of. But that is the same course they said I got. I did I get excellent award. So when I receive it, they said they are mailing it to my house. I said before you mail it to my house, I will upload this one on Facebook. <laughs> that miracle God will do in your life in the name of Jesus. See, God specializes in impossibilities. I want to tell somebody here today: if there is anything that is too hard, that is where God wants to prove His supremacy. Things that go and ask uh, Dr. Uche. Mm -hmm. he, he, he will understand what I'm saying. Remember when he came back from uh, Texas? It was so hard. I felt the body within him. I felt it, but I can't help him. The day I saw it on Facebook that, hey, this miracle has been done, I said, this must have been God by himself. So for as many that are going through stops, Things that your brain cannot handle. God of heaven will handle you for you in the name of Jesus. But the only thing is that just trust in God. Believe in him. Come under his new management. Surrender your life to Jesus. Let Jesus, let God see your sincerity. That you are, it's not that you want to, the Bible says if anyone will boast, let him boast of the Lord. It's not that you just want to, or make shakara for anything, but you just believe that God is able to do it. I believe there's someone here who has been going through that situation. They say you can never graduate. You will seem as if there may not be a way out, but because of the grace of God in this house, very soon you will come on this holy altar. You will be celebrated in the name of Jesus. I want us to rise up on our feet. His name is Aya. any other name. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is Lord. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord.
conversation with him means that this day God wants to settle some impossibility situation. To the sick, he said, Come, come. The word of God said, He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, Not come to Pastor, come to Jesus. We are talking of Jesus. What is that situation? It may be over your immigration matter. But there is something, there is something, there is something that is almost giving you depression. Or it may only be one or two, just come, just come before the altar. Just come. I am not the one to provide solutions to it, but I don't know how God is going to do it. If God can do it in my life, I believe he can do it in somebody's else life again. You will sing that song. that the world is already waiting for and nobody has been able to provide solutions to that research but with you one way or the other God will just use you and the, that particular yoke in your life will be completely destroyed but I want you to begin to speak to God not to man now you are the one who knows that particular issue this is a Kairos moment God is moving in the midst of his people. He's touching, he's touching me, he's touching, he's touching, he's touching situations and circumstances. He said, my daughter, I, there is a way out over this. Don't go into depression. He said, my son, if I have done it before, I can still do it again. If it means God, we have to suspend certain laws. If it means that God has to suspend natures, Joshua spoke that day. He said, You sir, stand and still at Gibeon. You must stand and still at Idol. The Bible said, And the sun stayed, and the moon stayed. But the people avenged themselves of their enemies. God is moving in his power all over the world. The Spirit is moving hey, all over the world as the prophets have to be. upon him. Let him hear you. You are his daughter. You are his son. Ah, the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Upon we are on the Mount Zion right now. Upon Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Finally, you will sing this song, Instrumentalist Epos, and I'll just pray, and you'll go and have your sing. We on the mountain Zion, we on the 
the name of our God. You always say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and he saved. Jesus, you are our righteousness. We have no righteousness of our own. Father, I'm praying for all your children here this evening, this afternoon, including those that may be hearing us online, that have one peculiar situation or the other. To the sick, you say, come over to the other side. To the oppressed, you say, come over to the other side for deliverance. Father, if you have done it in the life of that man, the madman of Gadarenes, he said, he ran towards you, Jesus, and he worshipped you. And his every demons in him disappeared. Even though they say, we are many, we are legions, we are many, over 2,000, but in the twinkling of an eye, that man was completely set free. Father, I'm praying for all your children here today. Are there legions of demons? We are all holding them back from possessing their possession. If you have done it for that man, madman of gatherings, you will do it for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, even the demons have prayer point. He said, Don't send us out of the country, just send us to the you answer. Father, for this one, so God, they are not demons. Father, they are daughters and sons of the living God. Their prayer request is that Lord provide solutions to every every problems in their life in the mighty name of Jesus. When Anna whispered to you, O oh God, he like said, Woman, why are you drunk in a time like this? He said, I'm not drunk. I'm making my request to not to God. And he like said, May your request be granted by God. Father, I stand upon this holy ground this afternoon. I cling to the old rugged cross and I declare every problem that has followed your people here today. I said, let them disappear before them in the name of Jesus. I declare to you today, may your request be granted by God in the name of Jesus. I say it is well with you. I declare it is your turn to testify. It is your turn to dance. It is your turn to rejoice. It is time to fly. You are fly higher. You are fly higher. The Lord will carry you on eagle swing. And you begin to swear with the eagles. So shall it be in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, blessed Father. Jesus' mighty name we pray. You can go and have your seat. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much for watching that um, wonderful ministration that you just clicked on now. I hope it inspired you. I hope your life was changed and transformed by that ministration. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we are committed um, as a church to giving you more inspirational and spiritual uplifting videos like the one you just saw. Click on the notification bell so that you can see those videos when they're uploaded. And please give this video a thumbs up and also share it with your friends and your families as a form of evangelism so that they can also see and be inspired by what you just saw right now. Thank you very much for watching um, this video. God bless you.